Um, so there's a lot in our uh, tech news to talk about. Um, first of all, did you see that black hole picture? Yeah, it was really neat. And uh, I even read a little bit about the the woman who made it possible. And so she's, it, it was just neat to see somebody like that being recognized. Well, I have a lot of controversial things to say about it that I Do feel it. like, yeah, nobody's <laughs> talking about this on Reddit or anywhere. Really? Um, is that people kept saying picture. And to me, it's an image that was interpolated with data. You know That's what I mean? Right. They didn't they didn't take a camera and take a picture of this. It's, no, it, it's not a picture. It's data layered upon itself to say this is what it would look, look like. Look like if you were close by. And it's literally rendered. So it's like taking a rendering. It's like, you know, the dinosaur from Jurassic Park was rendered. We didn't take a picture of it. I, I don't see how everyone's getting away with that. Anyway... Um, the other thing that bothered me about it was um, all of the press she was getting. Yeah. I mean, she only wrote a few hundred lines of code on it, and I realized she was part of the team. Yeah. But uh, there was a what whole team the out there, the team? a huge yeah. team, and they were actually really, really nice. Um, I read an interview with one of the other guys that was on the team that we yeah. don't know his name because he's not a girl, and yeah. he just basically said, you know, yeah, she was a big part of it and just kind of stepped in the background, but... I feel like no one's talking about what I'm saying. Number one, it's not a picture. And number two, it wasn't just her doing it. So, bam, well, that's what I have to say. Let's talk about it really yeah. quick. Then. Um, I'll just do a quick counterpoint on, I mean, I'll agree it's not a picture. But I think the importance of it as far as science goes, um, now we have a rendering. I'll give you that one. But it it is kind of proof positive that black holes exist more than just theoretical calculations. And, you know, we have had some proof positive, but this is more of seeing is believing kind of a concept that, hey, look, we've been able to render it based on actual data points that we have. So, you know, I'd say that's actually a big win. And, um, you know, even though theoretically we've known about them for quite a while, now we can say we can render it based on actual scientific data. Yeah, no, good good points. It is exciting. I just think people got a little carried away with it. You know, it's interesting, though, reading the comments, and I love doing that. I always read comments. Because... Don't do it. <laughs> Don't even read our comments. Just, I love to crazy. see the crazy. <laughs> yeah. but just well, kidding. Please comment. We like your comments. Yeah. We actually like to write back to your comments. Especially if you're crazy. We like yeah. that, too. We like crazy comments. So it was a lot of the comments on CBC were like, who cares? Um, this doesn't mean anything. I mean, the problem with CBC comments is they're mostly political. And we, we've had political scandal federally. We've got elections going on in Alberta, the province. And so all of a sudden, this article comes up about, hey, we have a picture of a black hole. And people are like, who cares? And I was like, well, then don't click on the link, man. <laughs> like, <laughs> click on the other boring. Yeah. Man, Canadian politics are so boring to me. I remember growing up, I used to deliver papers with you, and I'd try to read. As soon as I read Conservative Party, I just went right to sleep. <laughs> I mean, but anyway, you're voting today, right? I voted. Oh, okay. So now I have a right to complain, no matter what the election results are. All right, exciting. We'll have to find out next week how it went. Yeah. Um, the other thing that's kind of big in the news that I just wanted to bring up was uh, Julian Assange. Yes. He uh, was uh, taken out of the embassy in London, mm -hmm. and uh, that was kind of crazy. It sounded crazy to me. Did you hear that he was putting, like, smearing feces on the wall and doing all oh. kinds of crazy? You didn't hear that? No. So, do you think it's real or do you think it's yeah. the slander to say this guy belongs behind bars? Well, I was reading it on, I, I believe, CNN. I mean, I can link yeah. to the article if you really want to. I, I just was thought it was common knowledge. So apparently he had a cat while he was there that he never yeah. cleaned up after. And uh, he was just a really bad, bad um, person. Tenant? Uh, <laughs> tenant, yes. That's what I was looking for. Was he paying rent? Probably not. It doesn't surprise me. I mean, he had a very polished look to him back when, you know, WikiLeaks first came out. But in the end, Dan, he's just a hacker that used to live in his mom's basement. And Perfect. now he he lived in an embassy with a cat. 
So smearing feces is weird, but you know, like the pictures of him with his beard and you know, whatever, right? Like that's a hacker. That's a guy who's made his career, you know, sitting at a computer, probably without pants on. And <laughs> so it doesn't surprise me that he looked like that. So the- I, w- I want to bring up a few things here. Yes. Um, hopefully he was wearing pants the whole time, but literally being locked in an embassy is kind of like being in jail, if you think about it, right? Oh, yeah. And, and I think that's... Well, and if you're in jail, at least you get to go and do PE time where you run around, <laughs> lift weights, you're served free oh, hot meals. Net access. That's right. And so that's the big difference. And that's the funny thing. And that poses the question to you, Matt. If you had to choose between three hot meals, gym <laughs> time, sunshine, or internet access, in an... <laughs> which would you choose? <laughs> Our listeners are like, I don't get that reverence. But I think it's the second week in a row we've, we've reverenced. Well, neither did he. Remember when I brought it up with him and he had no idea? Yeah, oh. Jeff Listeners, we're talking about Jeff Goldblum and, and his appearances on Saturday Night Live. So, yeah, what were we talking about? Well, I was wondering if you would rather have internet access or three hot meals and uh, and exercise. I I would rather have three hot meals and exercise. But if you ask me, would I rather be in jail or in an Ecuadorian um, embassy in London with internet access? Um, I would probably take the embassy because jail's downright scary, Dan. If you hear the stories about jail, you don't want to go there. Hardened criminals come out of there and they're like, I'm not going back. No way. That's a good point. I will take the embassy any day with internet access and a government that kind of loved me for a while. But they turned on him. It sounded like, from what I read, is he started hacking the Ecuadorian government's computers. Right. Like, I mean, he's a hacker. That's what he does. But, you know, like they they quickly turned on him when he's like, I expose governments and you're a government and giving you three hot meals and hot showers and letting (laughs) your cat bubbles hang out. And right. Like not a very gracious host. Oh, man. I should say. Yeah. Well, I found the articles about the feces on the wall. So Interior Minister Maria Paula Romo told reporters Thursday that the previous um, that the previous administration had allowed Assange to get away with be- behavior like putting feces on the wall of the embassies and other behaviors of that nature. Um, so she added that the country laid out about $400,000 in medical food and laundry and legal expenses for Assange. So it sounds like he was a terrible tenant Yes. And yes, that was true about the feces smear. So there you go. Well, That's it, from the root.com. It kind of, it kind of begs the question like he was wanted in Denmark, I think it was Denmark or maybe Sweden for um sexual assault and rape. Like it it, it kind of sounds like he's Maybe that's legit. I know the the charges were dropped, but I think they were dropped because they couldn't extradite him and time ran out. So, I don't know. I mean, are we shocked that he's creepy? Um, I'm not. And then on the other hand, you could always be a conspiracy theorist and say, oh, they're just trying to slur his image so that the United States can finally extradite him and lock him away forever like they've always wanted to do. And, and Along with Meg stop- Longshaw, right? <laughs> Along with Meng Meng Zhao, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is yeah. a crazy time. Um, I hope we don't get um, extradited. 